Hi, my name is Neb Kamus Sen Atumri. This is another one of the videos in this Black History series. This video is entitled Black Magic, the Curse of the Mummy. The life of the Egyptians was so suffused with magic that their art and literature were, were permeated by it. The walls of the pyramids were inscribed with religious and magical designs, including some rituals from Neolithic times. There were also a great number of magical spells. These wall inscriptions instructed the pharaoh on how to answer when he stood in front of the Nitirat of judgment so that he could be assured of success in his search for immortality. The Egyptians' magic was of two types. One was used for legitimate purposes to help either the living or the dead. The other type was intended to bring down death and destruction upon the magician's unfortunate victim. Both were called black magic, chamisti, which is where they got the word chemistry from. Egyptian magic aimed at calling on the Nitirat and making the deities who were family serve the purposes of the magician. These results were achieved by using words of power, talismans, and magical weapons. With all these sophisticated magical practices, it is no wonder, no mystery, that the Egyptians became known among other nations of the time as the land of magicians and sorcerers. The mummification of bodies which showed a profound knowledge of medicine and physiology among the Egyptians was also part of the Egyptian magical tradition. Some of these spells and curses used by the Egyptians in these burial rites are still used today in what is known as low magic and high magic. The Egyptian Book of the Dead is a sacred writing of inspiration filled with prayers and litanies or a form of prayer and recitations that was recited by your ancient Egyptian ancestors on behalf of their relatives that had passed to a future life. For the greatest importance is attached to this composition in knowing that these recitals will secure for the deceased an unhindered passage into the next world and enable the deceased to overcome the opposition of disagreeable influences. They had protection for various amulets and spells that enabled them to fight off these malevolent beings. Portions of the Book of the Dead were eventually incorporated into their funeral ceremonies and a papyrus copy of the Book of the Dead was placed near the, near the sarcophagus, the stone coffin, in every tomb. <clears throat> Many of the grave or tomb robbers called archaeologists called the scrolls found with the mummies the dead man's book. Actually, to the ancient Egyptians, it was known as the book of the coming forth by day, which was taken from older texts. There are texts written on the walls of the pyramids which are referred to as the pyramid texts. These texts had been modified because it was feared that they were dangerous because they hieroglyphs. There were hieroglyphs of scorpions, snakes, 
birds, humans. However, because of their potential danger, they were replaced with symbols in order to ensure the safety of the deceased. In order to preserve the bodies of their dead relatives, various processes of embalming were used depending on the status of the deceased and the wealth of the, of the deceased family. One process of embalming was used only by pharaohs and those who could afford it. The first step in this process is an incision was made in the, in the left side above the groin from which the lungs, stomach, intestines, and liver were removed. These organs were washed in palm wine and then stuffed and placed in canopic jars made of alabaster. The heart is left inside the body to be weighed against the ostrich feather of truth worn by the Nitirt Ma'at goddess of truth and justice, the daughter of Re, Ora. As each step is done, a formula of prayer is from the book of the dead is recited over the body. The body of the pharaoh would be soaked in a solution of natron for 70 days. Any longer than that would be unlawful. The body had natron crystals packed around it for 40 days, after which the decaying process would stop and the body would be ready for wrapping. After the 70 day period, the body is washed and dried carefully. The natron turns the color of the skin to a greenish gray. There is a period of time where the people are allowed to publicly voice their opinion about their pharaoh. In some cases, if he was found to be unjust or cruel during his ruling, he would be denied a decent burial. When one becomes a pharaoh, he is like a link between the gods, Nitiru, and man and must rule justly or receive an eternal mocking after his death. With this in mind, the pharaoh is encouraged to rule justly. A pharaoh that ruled justly and was loved by his people received a royal funeral. His faithful subjects in the entire kingdom offers dirges, funeral hymns, twice daily. They fast, refraining from wine, animal flesh, wheat, and sacrifices. Now, perhaps one of the most famous Egyptian curses was the one connected with the Titanic cruise ship and the tomb of Tutankhamun, the boy ruler who died at age 19 in the Valley of the Rulers near the city of Thebes, Waset, in ancient Tamari. Pharaoh Tut, his legend still lives on today when his tomb was discovered and raided in 1922 by Howard Carter and his team. In November of 1922, after 15 years of digging in the Valley of the Kings, south of Cairo, British archaeologist Howard Carter and his financial backer George Herbert, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, broke through the sealed entryway to a sunken tomb in the Valley of the Kings, a royal burial place on the west bank of the river, the Nile River, opposite the city of Thebes. Several curses had been inscribed on the walls, warning thieves and the spoilers of the terrible calamities that would befall anyone disturbing the ruler's rest. The tomb 
was divided into four elements, four cities, four separate chambers, each crammed with, with treasures of gold, silver, and precious stones. Understandably, Carter did not pay much attention to the curses on the tomb's walls and thrilled with his discovery, immediately cabled Lord Carnarvon asking him to meet Carter's expedition at once. Carnarvon speedily heeded this summons and soon arrived in Tamare, Egypt. Carter had delayed entering the tomb until Lord Carnarvon arrivals in deference to the Earl's sponsorship of his expedition. Carter and Carnarvon entered the tomb together and shortly afterwards the first death attributed to the tomb's curse took place. A few hours after entering the tomb, Lord Carnarvon became ill as a result of an insect bite and died without regaining consciousness. The Egyptian scarab rules the insect world. On the night Carnarvon died, the lights went out all over Cairo, causing Egyptian newspapers to blame his death, Carnarvon's death, on the tomb's curse. The newspaper headlines read, Death shall come on swift pinions to those who disturb the rest of the Pharaoh. In the spring of 1923, the newspapers around the world claimed that this dramatic inscription had been found inside of King Tot Ach Amun's tomb. Carnarvon's son and heir said that his father's favorite dog in England at the time began to howl and then drop the dead at the same time of its master's death. The Egyptian deity Anubis, Anubu, rules the canine world. Howard Carter and his team found four coffins. In the final coffin laid the body of King Tut. As scientist Dr. Douglas Derry unwrapped King Tut's body, each layer of cloth was covered with gold jewelry. Also on this dig was a rich American lawyer named Theodore Davis, who later became an archaeologist himself. He stumbled across a small pit that had fragments of artifacts, floral wreaths, food, and wine jars, some of which bore the royal seal of King Tut. Howard Carter and his team knew that hieroglyphics warned of vengeance on intruders. A cobra, the, the symbol of an Egyptian royalty, had devoured a cannery belonging to Howard Carter. To some, the meaning of this was clear. A terrible punishment would befall those who violated Tut's tomb. However, the expeditioners spent the next year excavating before opening the chamber containing Tut's sarcophagus. Scientists now say that the deaths may have been caused by bacteria or even atomic radiation sealed inside the tomb. Howard Carter and most of the others who entered the tomb lived on for many years. However, many of them many of their family members mysteriously died a short time afterwards. Furthermore, 20 people were with Howard Carter in Tut's burial room. Within months after Tut's coffin was opened, 13 of those 20 people had died. In every case, the, the death was due to an unknown cause and Lord Carnarvon was the first. Arthur Mace was another who died 
some time after. Arthur Mace was the scientist who helped Carter remove the part of Toots' body. Yet, other scientists claim it was because of a germ living on the mummy. Remember, this Toot was buried 4,000 years ago, which means they are saying that the virus was able to live that long. They have even labeled it coffin disease. The word virus, also called parasites, is Latin meaning poison and can affect human, animals, and plants. Viruses are very small and compact. Most can be seen only with an electron microscope. The size of these tiny organisms is measured in, in nanometers. A nanometer is about 1 23rd millionth of an inch. The smallest viruses, such as the smallpox viruses, are 200 to 300 nanometers in diameter. Vir viruses do not carry enough information in their genes or instructional molecules to live by themselves. In other words, the virus needs other living cells to survive. Viruses don't give anything useful to cells and thus it infects and destroys cells. Viruses are dependent on other cells because they can't make their own protein and carbohydrates. They also cannot produce ATP, the basic energy carrier of a cell. Keep in mind that viruses are either DNA, dioxy, ribonucleic acid or RNA, ribonucleic acid, giving you DNA viruses and RNA viruses. Now the word dead means without life, ceasing to exist. When you die, all of the functions and organs in your body no longer work. Now as previously stated, viruses need other living cells to survive. Each cell is a brain, and each brain has a cell. To be continued at part two. We hope you learned something from this video, and we urge you to share this video and to subscribe to the only channel where you will learn true ancient Egyptian mysteries. No more lies, no more guesswork. So share, subscribe, click on the like button below. See you at part two of the video.